Did someone say exclusive? Let's drink some whiskey. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm Whiskey Chaser Brian here in Chrissy's Bar, Kenny. I hope your week has been fan diddly tastic. Brand new, fresh out of the release gates, on the shelf here and ready to go. We've got single malt, we've got PX Sherry, we've got cast strength, and we got a single cask. I mean, you already know, this is suiting up to be epic. And of course it is. This is the brand new release from Ecklinville Distillery, a 14 year old PX Sherry single cask release bottled exclusively for the Carry Out Killarney under the Dumbbells brand. So by now you all know how I like to roll on this channel. We do our very best to bring you the latest and greatest releases in a very timely manner. And by timely, I mean I put an enormous amount of pressure on our suppliers to guess the new releases here, lickety split, in the door, on the table, as in pretty much the day after the release nearly. I'm nice like that. So before we get into the deets, I just want to give a shout out to John in Carriot Killarney for getting this bottle to us lightning quick. A pigeon couldn't have gotten here quicker. And it's all in the name of doing this video. So uh, thanks, John. Always a superb service from the team down in Carry Out Killarney and uh, always going the extra mile to help out. Nice. Fanboy alert here. Might be some brown nosing. Touch, some praise, applauding, respect, kudos, credit, mad props, pats on the back, salutes, commendations, and aberrations. You get the point. So a while back, I did a review on some of the Dumbbells products, which was one of their core range products. I think it was the Dumbbells 12 PX, which I will obviously leave a link to above. I won't be going into the distillery all that much. I covered it fairly substantially in that video, but Dumbbells whiskey is released under the Ecklinville distillery. Um, I did speak about it in that video. Now, I'll give you a broad overview of Ecklinville Distillery, which is located in Kilcrubbin, Northern Ireland. I hope I said that right. It is the brainchild of Shane Braniff, and they started distilling their own spirits in or around 2013 when the distillery opened and have released a number of various different whiskey expressions to date, including a number of single casks that are of a sourced origin. A small interesting fact, the Ecklinville Distillery was the first distillery in Northern Ireland to be granted a distilling license in 125 years. Nice. And they have a massive loving and adoring following that jump on all of their releases as soon as they come out and snatch them up in kind of like record time. Like actual, probably record time. Now, the distillery have released a number of single casks to date under the Dunville's brand, Dunville's brand, which are distillery bottlings. And I believe all of them are sourced. I could be wrong in that, but I nearly am certain they are sourced. Every distillery has to make means for an alternative income while their own stocks mature. Totally get this, totally understandable. Uh, you know, there, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's something I like to see. Now, just how many they have released of the single cast, I'm not entirely sure, but it is a substantial number of bottlings and they all have gotten rave reviews and do receive a fairly substantial secondary value on the auction sites. But these newest single cast releases are some of the first ones bottled for businesses outside of the distillery. And this one right here, well, this is the first ever bottling for an off license, which will make this unique and a first. Now, so far there are two of these types of single cask releases in the wild, and I will be doing a video on the other one shortly, but today we focus on the bottling for Carry Out Killarney. Carry Out is of course a franchise group of off licenses operating around the country, and off licenses for my American friends is just another fancy word for liquor store we use here in good old Ireland. Not too long ago, Carry Out Killarney, run by John Fleming, released its very first Dingle single cask bottling which I did a video of it also. It was good, I have to say. I'll leave a link above. You can check it out. Do, why not? It's good whiskey. So John and the team below in Carry Out are killing it lately with releases and just basically in general, looking after customers, finding rare bottles for people. Uh, there's never really an issue or a problem with anything and nine times out of 10, they come through on requests for you and they really do genuinely help you out. John has been in the off license business for nearly 19 years or over 19 years and uh, you know, recently getting into releasing his first single cask releases. And I did say in that video to watch this space. I told you and I wasn't wrong. Now I am gonna say that again to watch this space. 
and I'm not gonna say any more about it, but you've been warned. So a little bit about this whiskey here. It's a 14 year old double distilled single malt whiskey finished in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks, also referred to as PX Sherry in case you didn't know that. And it's a cast strength. It's a damn strong cast strength at 57.7% strong cast strength. It's a lot of kisk, kick cask strength. PX Sherry finished whiskies, very popular here in Ireland as well as Scotland. There have been a big number of releases in the last few years and they have their own unique identity. From time to time, this is true, I do come across one that's nearly overdone its length in a PX Sherry cask. It's unbelievably sweet and I find it can take away from the attributes on the disc distillate of the whiskey itself sometimes. The Pedro Jimenez grape is mainly grown within a few regions of Spain and it's the name of a white Spanish grape variety. It's used to produce a varietal wine, which is like an intensely sweet, dark dessert sherry. It's made by drying the grapes under the hot sun, concentrating the sweetness, which are then used to create a thick black liquid with a strong taste of raisins and molasses that is fortified and aged in Solera. This particular release here has spent nine years in first fill bourbon casks and then the remaining five years in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks, yielding 337 bottles, priced at 185 euro, of which there are a few remaining bottles left. If I'm told, I'll leave a link down below to carry out socials. Uh, they won't be around for much longer. Uh, when people do open these and they see what they're like and they try it for themselves, they're not gonna last at all. They're gonna be gone. Speaking of trying, Let's get it poured and do some whiskey notes. Now, I want to make reference here to the unique bottling that Dunville's have gone with. This is absolutely awesome packaging. The label, super cool. Tube is retro. The colors are awesome. And up until now, we've seen a very different style of labels. I put one on the screen and packaging for the distillery release single cask. So to see the difference here, I'll do another shot of this. Um, it's pretty cool. In my opinion, they certainly nailed it. Once again, double distilled, 14 year old, single malt Irish whiskey finished in PX Sherry casks, 337 bottles release, cask strength 57.7%. This is cask number 1699, bottled on the 5th of, or the 10th of May, 2021 and this is bottle number 231 open for business Ooh. <laughs> on the nose first of all it's very lush it's very fruity very much ripe berries um, there's a bit of nutmeg in there as well which is really Really beautiful. Um, there's a touch of kind of a cinnamony spice to it. On the nose, the spice doesn't really come through all that much. It's there. You are getting, you know, there's a lot of ABV, there's a lot of alcohol in this, so it, you're going to get that little bit in your nose. Um, interesting. That has a tobacco nose. And to me, a prominent tobacco nose. Not really used to that, but that's not a bad thing. That's really rich and, you know, it adds to the character of it. In behind then that, you're getting your fruity malt notes behind the berries from like the single malt, you know, your, your apples and your, your pears that you, I would be accustomed to when it comes to a single malt. Maybe it's just my nose. Very complex. There is a ton happening here. Um, that berries note is really interesting. It's like a... If you were, if you got a dessert and you got like a, a like a raspberry coulis or, or something, or what's it, a compote or something like that, like mixed with vanilla notes, it's kind of that nose. I don't know why I'm doing, like I'm spreading it on cake or something. Lots of that coming through and you know, your, your, your vanilla and even kind of, you want to go deeper and darker, you're getting into a little bit of the treacle side of things. Very interesting, a lot happening, a lot happening, very interesting. We drink, it's lunch. Whoa. A blast of spice that is not there on the nose. That's coming out of nowhere. But then you have your lovely, lush, rich, dark fruits 
very, very fruity, very sweet, not overly sweet like you would get from if it was too long in a Pedro Jimenez, but you're getting a kind of real luscious kind of grape notes. You know, your apples and pears from your single malt is coming through as well. Very juicy, very oily, ripened berries. That treacle is coming through as well. Very mouth coating, very spicy, very intense on the spice. You know, again, like the nose, very complex. That is goddamn delicious. Hint of the tobacco note is coming through. No bitterness, but the nose and the palate are tying in quite well, I think, my personal opinion. Um, the finish, it lasts forever ton of dark cherry notes um, that you would come to expect. They're still there. They're on the, like, kind of like on the middle of my tongue, but the spice is what's really interesting. It's everywhere. It's on my cheeks. It's on my tongue, the front and the back and the middle. It's on the top of the roof of my mouth. Now that's not in a bad way. That is, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, it's really good, really good. The, you know, the, you, it's not overpowering those dark fruits that are kind of on my tongue, but that's an exceptional dram. Not for the faint-hearted. Uh, let's add a touch, a touch of water and calm the spice beast. I'm gonna add a little water here. All right, probably put too much water in it, but no, no. Nope. Okay, so adding that little bit of water then, what it's done is it's calmed down the nose a bit. You're kind of taking a lot of those fruity notes from the PX Sherry and paired them back a bit. You're kind of going more at the malty notes to it now. A lot more towards the malty notes of it, actually. And that alcoholic kind of spicy note is definitely dropped down, uh, you know, a lot. Still nice though, you're still getting a lot of pear and, and, and a real hint of the dark fruits, the sherry notes, just a hint, not, it's not in your face, obviously. Cilantro. Okay. The spice is really taken out of it. Um, you are getting the single malt notes coming through a little bit more. I, you know, Maybe I put a touch, of, a touch of too much water into it. I don't, I'm not, I don't think I did, but uh, what I would say is that this is a better dram without water. Neat. Um, you're getting a lot more character, a lot more of the profile coming through. Uh, you're starting to understand kind of where it's at in the taste spectrum, where the sweetness is coming into it, your nice balance in between your PX Sherry and your single malt flavors and the dislit and stuff like that. So yeah, hold, hold tight for my final thoughts. Now, before I give you my thoughts on the whiskey, if you liked any of that video, do consider giving me a thumbs up and of course, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks. And now to finish up. So what do I think of this whiskey and this release? I think it's absolutely delicious. And I mean, really delicious. There is lots of spice happening in this. So it, like I said already, it's not really for the faint hearted but it is full of flavors. It's really complex. I mean, you could sit down with a few of these and get slightly different noses on each pour. Um, I think it does really need to air out a little bit um, when it gets into the glass, give it a minute, you know, let it settle before you start getting into its complexities. Price wise at 185 euro for a 14 year old single malt is a touch, in my opinion, on the high side when you compare it to some of the other offerings out there around this price range. Um, and this is not a caveat, but you know, considering you're getting, what you're getting is a seriously high ABV single malt, single cask release, that's quite rare. And to be honest, it's the nature of the beast in Ireland at the minute. It's a, it's premium whiskey that demands a premium price. And if you were to treat yourself, I guarantee you, you would not be disappointed. I can tell you that, I would guarantee it. I'd highly recommend. Um, the flavor profile is absolutely beautiful. Now, before I go, I just want to say congrats again to Carry Out Killarney for this stunning release. I know with these releases, there are a lot going on behind the scenes and you know things that we don't get to see. So um, yeah, 
well done to the team and John down below in Killarney and uh, also the Dunville's team on the packaging and the seeing these hit the shelves and coming through with them. I will leave a link down below to all of Carry Out Killarney's social media uh, if you want to get in touch and reach out to them and see what's going on with any extra bottles, blah, blah, blah. I will also leave a link down below to Ecklandville Distillery, which have a number of various different uh, whiskey profiles and whiskey brands under their label. And I'm gonna leave it at that now. So thanks to Christie's for supplying this dram for me today. As always, all thoughts on my own. This one has been a real pleasure. Until the next time, stay safe, stay hydrated. Chaser, out. Slouch out.